Hey guys, it's the Train Freak here, and today I would like to go with you on part two of my operations, which will be covering the uh, Waybill software from Shenandoah Software, or Shinware. Um, now, before we get into it, I always want to remind all my viewers to... And make sure you fill in the bell so that way you receive future notifications on all of my videos, including how-tos such as this one, my weekly layout updates, my Sidetrack Sunday live stream reminders, and of course all the different type of contests that I like to hold for you, my viewers. And always thumbs up that helps get my videos out to other people out there in the YouTube world with YouTube's algorithms and feel free to comment if you want to ask questions or just tell me how I'm doing so let's get to the Waybill software in just a moment because first I'm sure y'all remember that we did the car cards okay and there's a little pocket that's what the Waybills are going to go in the car cards tell you about the rolling stock itself. The way bills tell you about the commodity that is in the rolling stock, where it came from, and where is it going to. So detailed that it's not telling you what place, but if your place or your industry has multiple tracks or spots, it tells you which track and which spot that that car is supposed to go to. Now, the reason why I'm jumping on this Waybill thing real quick is because on my last layout update, you notice where I finally got a track going from staging to where they can get to the yard now. I know the industry area is not complete yet. I totally get that. But now I can start to run some trains and actually do some simple operations and then as I progress on the layout, then we can expand, you know, farther on. And the whole reason why I'm wanting to do this is because of the traveling boxcar that come from the back on track team. So, so this is one precursor for my big video as to what I'm going to do with that traveling boxcar. And now you have a hint that I'm going to use it in operations but not just any operations. It's going to be my first train on my layout that will be using operations with the car cards and the waybill system. So one of the first things I've already done is I created its own car card. Now, unfortunately, there's no road number on there, so I just used six X's uh, just to kind of simulate the, uh, the car. But I did put a return to um, a city and state in Australia because that's where the car originated from. And of course, uh, Shannon uh, Tapia from Back on Track was so nice enough that he actually left um, the new down at the bottom where it says new 2-66. That's the build date. So it was nice that he left that stuff on there, which kind of helps um, if you do a little research as to what, what kind of commodities uh, did these cars carry. And um, since there's no specific railroad tied to that car, I could really carry anything. Um, but what I might have to do is research where the, the town that Shannon lives in and see what kind of industries are there to kind of be like, okay, can I use this car on my layout? And if I can't, then I'm just going to make something up. So, either way it goes. So, let's get to the uh, Waybill software. And I will show you how all of this works. So, give me just a minute. Alright y'all, this is what the Waybills software from Shenandoah Software or Shinware um comes when you install it so they kind of go ahead and give you a sample and before we start delving into it uh, the first thing that we want to do because I have played with this software on one of my other computers um, we can get up to 10 way bills uh, per piece of card stock um, 
unfortunately, even if you have a duplex printer like I have, or you can print on both sides, the software does not have duplexing capabilities. However, uh, once you print the first time, you can put your paper in upside down or your cardstock, because that's what I use, and print it, you know, again, and it knows to print the back side. So that's just kind of some little disclaimer there. Um, what I'm fixing to show you today, you do not necessarily have to use with this software. These are just going to be kind of some examples, um, you know, as far as the basic setup. But even if you're like, you know, my buddy Ray, uh, who does all this by pen and paper, and I think uh, there's another one out there that does it pen and paper. Uh, I think it's John Arthur. Um, some people choose to start that way, and hey, that's great. Nothing wrong with it. Um, this is just to help make things a little smoother or more simplistic, I guess. I don't know. I haven't tried the pen and paper version, so I can't really say. Um, but there is uh, something that I am going to show that could come in benefit for you who hasn't that hasn't had the opportunity to get the software and... Um, um, you know, just you, to, to input it, and so you're still doing it manually. So I'm going to pull up this website. This is on, this is called opsig.org. This is a great um, operations uh, forum out there. And the main thing that I really like is this down here. It's under resources and links. And if you go to... Let's see here. Industry database. And scroll down. This kind of gives you an example. But you can actually look and see they have four text files here. Now the way Bill software includes probably an older rendition of these text files. I don't know how often OpSig um, updates. Um... But they've even, uh, you got East, um, Midwest, Central, uh, South, and then of course West. And it tells you like all, um, all your states um, that's included. Um, very, very good resource to have. And just to kind of show you what it looks like, let's look at South because that's typically what I run. And you can see that uh, it looks like a whole bunch of gobbledygook. The easiest way to explain it is this first row of number. That's the year that the industry was founded. And you got the name of the industry. You got your city, state, the railroads that served it. Sometimes you find one with more than one railroad, like this one here. Um, so the Aniston Foundry in Aniston, Alabama was either served by the Louisville and Nashville or the Southern. Um, and then, of course, it would tell you if it shipped or received, and then all the different type of commodities. Um, the last piece here that says Hurt L&N, that is just the person who um, uploaded this uh, industry in the OpSig uh, database. So, and instead of looking through it this way and trying to find something, the easiest thing to do is use what's called a control F on your keyboard, and that is a find. So let's say that I want to try to find, uh, let's, let's say cattle. Let's see if we can find any cattle. And sometimes it takes a minute for it to up, update. Okay, there we go. So now we got... The Selma Stockyards in Selma, Alabama has cattle. And let's see, because there is no S or R, that means they'd ship and receive it. So it could be um, one of those that, uh, depending, you know, what the purpose was for, um, it could have been, you know, a smaller stockyard coming to this bigger stockyard here. So, therefore, it would deliver, you know, cattle and hogs. And then, of course, um, when it got ready to, you know, ship off to, you know, like a, a butcher, then it would, 
you know, ship them out. So that just tells you because there's not an S or an R, they shipped and received. So something, you know, to think about. And let's see if we can find any more. Here's another one. Uh, the Shawnee Dairy Cattle Company. And looks like they, Kansas City Southern, and it was dairy cattle. And I don't know exactly what the uh, Chicago Great Western um, over here on this column's for, but I know the railroads that serve are on this side. And sometimes you'll see, um, like this one here, could be served by four different railroads, and that's Sears Roebuck. So, yeah, just depending on what you're trying to look for will depend on... Um, you know which which railroads would serve it and it gives you a good indicator when you're thinking of like you know your different rolling stock you know for this dairy company um the the kcc which i really don't know which one the kcc is well this is saying kansas city mk stands for mexico um so this would be down in the Mex Mex Mexico region for some reason. Um, let's look for something else. That way I can better explain it. Okay, here we go. The Almond Grain Company. Well, that's in Mexico as well. Let's get out of Mexico. Let's go elsewhere. Uh, here we go, Missouri. So here in the Belt and Lumber Company, they... And I don't know why this would be on here twice, but typically you wouldn't see two lines. So this is new for me. Uh, but you can see where the Frisco would receive this type of stuff from the Belt and Lumber Company. And so if you have like a flat car or a bulkhead flat that's Frisco, and you're trying to bring, you know, either lumber, plywood, or gypsum on your layout from staging, then this would be a good company to use. Or better yet, no, they're trying to receive it. So if you're trying to ship from your uh, sawmill to, um, you know, an off-site industry, then this would be a good one to use. And you could use a car that would say Frisco on it. And that would be more prototypical uh, for, you know, back in, well, before the 70s, of course. Uh, if you're going more like 40s and 50s and 60s, it would be more prototypical. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind as to why they put these railroads here because typically the uh, railroads would only use their uh, cars to do servicing back in the day. All right, so that's all I've got as far as OPSIG. Um, something to look into if you haven't already. It's pretty good stuff. All right, so back to the way, Bill. So let's go ahead and explain, you know, kind of how the layout looks. We are in the edit and preview mode, which is pretty much the best mode to be in. List and preview, this just shows a list of the current waybills that are already created. Uh, list mode, of course, now only shows that, and then here's your preview only. So let's just go back to edit and preview because it's just much better. Um, let's look at the waybill themselves. Uh, in the upper right, you can see what the car type is. This is the two location. This is your waybill cycle. Not every car on your layout is going to be cycled the same number because you're going to have cars come in and off during different times. So it's completely normal to have these off. But this just tells you which way to put your card next. And that's because when you cycle from a on-site industry to an on-site industry, or you're cycling at an on-site industry, you're going to notice that it says to here, and it's going to say from here. And because this is consistently on site, then your two here is uh, at the via there, which it's going, you know, elsewhere. So, and this looks like, um, and I'm going to set my vias up a little differently, and I will explain that later. But as far as your first industry goes, it can be anything on the layout. Um, it can be off site. It could be on site. It, it doesn't matter. So, um, so that's kind of the preview. And if you notice, the color codes kind of tell you like different areas. Like if you see there's different industries here, um, the, the color codes represent areas. And you can see you got Lubbock Yard and South Plains, which we're going to change every bit of that for my layout. 
Of course, you got all your different commodities here and the commodities that go with, you know, that type of car. And you can add a whole bunch of commodities in there. You can even look in here. Here's a huge list. Anything that does not have an X is the uh, commodities that are not selected. So, and, it, and then over here you can choose what type of car you want that to go with. So, for I'm going to see if I can find one. Like here, you got concrete pipe listed twice. Well, that's up to you to decide. Do you want your concrete pipe coming in on a flat car or a gondola? So, that's, you know, just something to keep in mind. And sometimes you might have three or four different types of, you know, types of cars. Um, let's see here. I thought I just saw grain. Well, here's lumber. There's three different cars for lumber, depending on what it is. Grain could come in in a box car, which would be in uh, pallet type bins or sacks. And then also you got grain in a, you know, covered hopper. Uh, so that's, you know, something to keep in mind. You can make this however you want it to be. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that because we will get to that a little later. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come up here to set up at the top, and we're going to want to create our railroad name. Now, if you this is the option to where you can create a freelance railroad or you can create your own uh, railroad. Um, there are some railroads out there that lease uh, locomotives from other um, railroad companies. For example... The uh, Missouri and Northern Arkansas Railroad that runs from uh, Newport, Arkansas up to somewhere around the Springfield, Joplin, Kansas City area part of Missouri. I don't know exactly. I think it's Carthage, Missouri, maybe. Um, they use Union Pacific Power, um, which they mostly run their trains one directional. So, and there's a big coal plant there. So, the coal, Union Pacific will bring the coal plant up to Newport, Arkansas. They will do a crew change. The UP crew gets off. The MNA crew gets on. And they run UP power. But they also have um, manifest, you know, freight that comes through there as well. Because there are a few industries along that route. So... Um, no matter what you choose your railroad to be, you can, you know, whatever your reporting marks for your railroad, that's fine. Um, for me, um, I run the Cotton Belt, even though I'm running a complete uh, freelance uh, layout. Um, but whether I was prototypical or freelance, because the Cotton Belt is what I run, I am going to go ahead and use the reporting marks of SSW which stands for St. Louis Southwestern. And that is the official name for the Cotton Belt. So if you see anything that says Cotton Belt on it, and you see SSW, that's why. All right, so now since I've done that, you can see at the very top it says St. Louis Southwestern Waybills. And then we'll have to rename our file here in a minute. So let's go ahead and rename our file. I want to save this as... And I'm going to name it the city that I'm going with. It's called Y Junction. And if anybody wants to know why I chose Y Junction, it's because the way my layout kind of set up is, especially for the Cotton Belt, it kind of Ys off. It's a point to point with a Y that goes to staging. So that's why I'm calling it Y Junction. All right. Uh, routes I'm not going to really mess with. Um, the system kind of really does that on its own. But if, uh, by instance, you have multiple routes, um, I'm thinking Eric Hall, I-M-R-R-O-COM, and I'll put his uh, channel link in the description below. Uh, he's, he's got a multi-level in-scale layout that's much bigger than mine. And I want to say he runs the Southern Pacific on one level and the Santa Fe on another. So he might adjust these routes or he might have adjusted it um, because I know he uses this software. He's the one who pointed it to me. Uh, but I'm not going to mess with it per se because I really only have one route. Now, via locations um, or via routing, 
this is where I'm going to add, since I've got two staging yards, um, I'm going to add those in there. But I'm also going to add uh, my local on there too. Now here's my reason. I've only got one yard. And my yard has four tracks. I've got one arrival track. No matter where the train comes from, I only have one arrival. And the yard master will have to break that train up and separate those cars into the next three tracks. And that could be uh, the first track, which would be the cotton belt. So I'm going to go ahead and add it. And the next one's going to be, the, which the cotton belt would be my staging for level two. My next one's going to be my local, which is going to service the all the industries on the layout. And I know I've told you that on level two, there's a big industrial complex that is going to have an interchange. So the local actually will pick up and drop off cars in that industrial interchange. And then that switcher that I'm still gathering uh, road names for will work that industrial complex. But for the yard, it's all coming out of the local. So we we'll just keep that in mind. And then the local also services the industries that are have yet to be built on level two that's not in that industrial complex and, of course, level three. And then I will have a second staging yard, which will be off of level three, and that's going to be the Ashley Drew and Northern. There's my ampersand. So the AD and N. So we're going to go ahead and add those. Now, the cool thing about... Um, this, if you notice over here, it's got VIA being interchange with the blue background. So we can add those and basically just click on the name, click on back color. And the cotton belt, I definitely want a blue. And the ADN, I want what's called kind of like a tether green. There we go. So that way when one of these is selected, whoever is doing the yard can easily differentiate colors and be like, okay, that needs to go to this track, that needs to go to that track. And they could possibly be switching more than one car simultaneously. And it's supposed to make their job a little easier. Um, local, uh, let's see, let's get a back color for the local. I don't really know what I want for a back color. Um... Maybe a, a gold. I think a gold would be pretty cool for the local. There we go. That way we got everything color coded. It just makes for a new person uh, that's, that's, you know, probably never ran a train before and they're just learning. Color codes always help. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and exit that. So now we have our VIAs, which now if I did my drop down, you can see VIAs here. All right, home industries. This one does take a while. One thing that you need to know is you need to make a list like I have here of all the different industries that are going to be on your layout and not necessarily what those industries are, but how many tracks or how many spots you are going to put for your layout. Now, let's go ahead and go in here, and I'm going to maximize this screen because it's just much easier and you see less stuff off to the side. Um, so, I'm going to have three levels, and this one here, or areas, per se, because I'm HO scale, and unfortunately, I can't have multiple areas on the layout. If I was doing N scale, then I could possibly have two or three areas per level. But here we're going to do one level per area. And each area is going to start off with a number. And here you can see they use 10, 20. I'm going to keep that and go 10, 20, 30. So my first area, and I'm going to go ahead and just select the first one because it's just much easier. I'm going to call, well, before I'm going to call it anything, we need to explain locations and CLICs, which I don't know exactly what CLIC stands for, but um, fair enough. So the first group of numbers is going to represent the area of the layout. The second group of numbers is going to represent which industry. For this one, this is going to be my first industry on level one. 
Then the second number is going to represent the track and the spot. So I've only got one track, but I'm going to have two spots on this one. If I wasn't worried about the spotting on the track, then I would leave the last number as a zero. But because I am concerned about spotting on this one, I'm going to have the uh, last two numbers as either 11 or 12. And that's to represent track one and spot one. All right, this is going to be my loco service track. And we are going to call this Y Junction Yard because that's where it's at. And it's in Arkansas because that's where I live. And then here we need to differentiate. Are we going to be receiving only, shipping only, or does it not matter? Well, in the local service track yard, we need to make sure that we're only receiving because we definitely don't want to ship anything from our service track. Now, the service track is designed to refuel, rewater, and resand the locomotives. So, let's look at our list here. And this list um, goes back to the commodities list that I showed you uh, with all the different you know, if, if you have the X selected, then it's in there. Um, since I'm not seeing sand. Oh, we do have sand. We'll go ahead and select sand. Because we are going to be receiving sand. And this is the one spot that I do want to receive sand. And I'm wanting to change this to level 1. And I'm going to take the note out. Because I don't care about the notes. Um, and then all we do is just hit add. Here we go. So now we got the locomotive service track. Now I know it's in white. That's fine for right now. It'll actually get its color once we leave. And then now I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these other locations on this level. Because we're not going to be using Lubbock. I'm going to go ahead and add, um, let's, let's see, do we have water? I'm not seeing water, so we'll need to add water and this one's actually going to go in spot two so let's add it and then the last one we're going to add is diesel fuel so that way we can service both steam and diesels all right so here you can see the sand has its own spotting water and diesel fuel share the same spotting meaning that I cannot have water and diesel fuel come in at the same time I can only have one or the other of those but I can have sand come in anytime and typically your sand's going to be in a covered hopper that's a two bay because of the weight of the sand um, the three bays it would just cause it to bow and rip in half all right so let's just exit out of that I'm going to show you that there's your color for the locomotive service track and we're going to go back in and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I got one more industry that I am going to add on here but I'm not going to show it today um, or I'll actually I'll show it a lot later I'm going to take a break from the video because there's no need for you to watch me and you know upload 15 industries I mean it's just ridiculous it would take too much time but I do want to show adding one on the second level and we'll add a third one on the uh, third level so let's see here um, so I'm just gonna click this one here and I'm looking on my list and I'm just gonna go with the first industry and some of these names you're probably gonna laugh and some of them you're probably gonna face palm but hey it's my layout and I like some funny funny stuff all right uh, with this industry here, I haven't quite figured out how many tracks I'm going to use yet. This is still kind of a work in progress. Um, but this is the big uh, sawmill um, that I was telling y'all about that I plan on building. And we're going to change this to Y Junction Industrial. Because that's what level 2 is going to be. And we're going to ship... And for the time being, let's check and see if we got wood chips. There's wood chips. And I'm going to call this level, whoops, 
level two, and we're going to delete that note. So Peckerwood Sawmill at Y Junction Industrial is going to be shipping out wood chips. So let's go ahead and add that. Um, and I left it as zero, zero for the time being because I do not know which track is going to be assigned. And I can easily go back in here, highlight, you know, if this is track two, we can change it and hit change. So now once you click off of it, it will go away. Um, something else that I want to ship will be lumber, whoop, not lube oil, lumber. There we go. And we're just going to hit add. And uh, something that we're going to receive is wood products. So add. Wood products would be like, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, different types of trunks, you know, depending on how it's, you know, on the car is it. Uh, the trunks laid the full length. Is it, you know, turned sideways and they're shorter? That would depend on, um, you know, the, I think a lot of railroads call them like a pulpwood car. Uh, that's what they carry is wood products. All right. Um, so there's that first industry. So we can take these and we're going to delete those out. All right. Um, let's go ahead and add one more. On this one, let me, I'm going to find an easy one. Actually, we'll go ahead and go to the next industry on the list. Because it only receives one thing. Ah! Yeah, Passmore Gas Company, they receive... Let's see here if I can... And I just typed in the letter L. Once you bring the drop-down box on, if it's something you're looking for, you can always just type in that letter. And I'm looking for LPG. And let's go ahead and add it. Now, you notice it's still white. So once I exit, now they all start showing up as... And I realized I got a typo there. So now, let's go in and fix that typo. And hit change. There we go. Now it's changed. And so now you can see here's our industries in this area. Or this is what we have listed for our layout as of right now. All right. Um, now I know the home locations are still off and that's fine. But for some odd reason you can't really add a home location here. Or you have to add it through the home industry. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go ahead and add... So this will be 30 dash, and this industry is going to be number two, so zero two. And this one only has one track, and the spotting does not matter, so track and no spotting. It's actually got two spots, but I really don't care uh, which is which. Or it might only have one spot, so therefore spotting doesn't matter. I haven't really decided on this industry yet, which is not built, so... All right, so the name, this is called the Muba Stockyard. Yeah, I know that's kind of cheesy. And this is going to be in Y Junction. This will be in my city area. And we are going to be shipping. Um, actually, we're going to make it to where we can do both ship and receive. Um... Let's see, is cattle on here? And I'm not seeing cattle, so oops, I don't want canned fruit. Cattle. And we're going to call this level three. That's going to be my group. And let's add that. Now, if you notice, now we got a pop up here. It says a CLIC zone code of 30 was added with the location name of Y Junction. And you may change the location name and the color of the text and background on the format window, which I will show you in here in just a minute. All right, the other one I want to go ahead and add in here is, and I'm not seeing sheep either, so sheep. And let's add that as well. All right, so now we got both cattle and sheep coming to and from the Muba stockyard, so that's why we left that blank. Um, that could be so that way we can receive it coming off site 
and we can also have um, we can ship it to one of the other industries that's going to be on my layout as well or we can ship them off-site depending on what the needs are so something like that you can always leave open-ended all right so I'm gonna go ahead and exit that and you know earlier like I was showing you on the VIA locations I like color codes we need to have this color code as well in order to fix that we got to come here to home location so let's go in here we get this nice little pop-up and this is also the waybill setup so the other way to find that you can go to setup and waybill format and there it is the only one you're not going to mess with is this one here leave offline industries alone because if you try to mess with it you're going to crash the software and then you got to start all over and it's not fun been there done it yeah got the birthday present from it so location name on this one i'm gonna leave alone back color i'm wanting to go with like kind of a pinkish red peach type color that way you know color codes are very very good the green and the light blue i feel like i need to change those as well um i really don't know what to change it to because you definitely want kind of a lighter color uh, dark color makes the text kind of hard to see so just keep that in mind um, now nah, we'll leave it we'll leave it alone we'll leave it alone um, but I do want to rename these so we're going to hit location name and this is YJCT yard and we're going to click on this one location name YJCT industrial there we go and then we'll just hit exit so here's a a list a, a starting list of what we have here now let's go ahead and look at the commodities real quick and I'm gonna maximize that window as well make it easier to see and we don't need that all the way over there there we go and you can see that some cars or some commodities don't have a car listed so but that's okay the ones we're mainly going to want to be using is the ones with the X the rest of them we could care less if it's a commodity that we added you have to double click on them to get them off a of print to X all right so cattle um, we need to choose a car type for it and cattle of course is going to be in a stock car and it looks like they have different versions they have a sf which is a stock car i'm assuming double door uh, sm which would be the stock car single door which is what i have and a sp which is a stock car for poultry it's a different type of stock car altogether uh, we're just going to do the sm for a sing okay single deck okay so that's what it is single deck uh yeah cattle is definitely going to be in a single deck stock car so let's just go ahead and hit change on that now you can see where it changed and let's find the other one in our list that we have X for it. they're down here at the bottom so we got sheep that's not listed uh, sheep is also going to be in a single deck stock car so we're going to go ahead and add SM on that one as well so change that and I guess I gotta scroll back up. There we go. And water. We all know water is gonna come in a tank car. Now, if you look at your different options of tank cars, you've got tank car acid, so that's T A T G is tank car glass lined. T L is lined, and I can't really tell what it is. And then of course a TM is just a standard tank car. Let's see what TL is because I'm curious to see what it says. Lined corrosive. So we definitely don't want that for our water. So we're just going to go TM for tank car. And let's change that. So now we have water. And then, of course, if there is um, an industry that we're not going to be dealing with, um, we can always take those off. Um, and... For the wood chips on mine, I'm not going to be using a standard hopper or a gondola. 
um, the standard hopper is actually, and I've got the card here in front of me, so let me look at it real quick. It, it's an HTS. So let's see if they have HTS uh, listed. And it looks like they don't. So we need to, we can choose that and we're going to add the letter S, which um, basically the difference between HT and HTS is the extended heights, you know, around the hopper. Because, you know, a regular, say a triple or a four bay open hopper that carries ore is going to be a lot lower because ore is a lot heavier than wood chips. So a lot of the railroads added that extra height for the wood chips because they could pack more due, due to it being a lot lighter. So let's go ahead and hit add. All right, add new car type HES hopper triple. Okay. And let's see if it added it. All right, looks like they didn't add it, so let's try it again. All right, now it added it the second time. You can see where it's added here. Okay? So now I'm going to take wood chips off of these others because I do want to use wood chips, but I don't want to use them on my layout with just a regular hopper or a regular gondola. I've got these HTS uh, type of cars for my layout to do that. So, All right, so I'm going to go ahead and exit. And it takes a minute for it to sink through. And it sunk. Okay. And eventually there's a lot of other chemicals on here I will be taking off. Or commodities I will be taking off including chemicals like that one there and chlorine. But like the wood chips now you can see we only have one. And let's see here's our water which is a tank car now. If we go to sheep. Uh, I got sheep here. Stock car single deck. And cattle, which was the other one we added, is right there, stock car single deck. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is, because I know this recording is starting to get very long, I am going to go ahead and pause this recording and continue adding on the rest of my industries here. Um, which, like I said, I've got a huge list. I mean... That's it's last I counted was either 14 or 15 industries. And then I will end up showing you a little more uh, in part three of actually creating the actual way bill. So let me pause this and um, let me get all these added so that way I can show you kind of what this should look like for your setup. So I will be back. Here. Okay, so now I went ahead and added all of my industries, and you can see it's quite a bit. And if you notice, you know, like the car shops, um, I'm really only using one track. I have three tracks there, and the other two tracks are to actually repair uh, different type of cars, um, depending on what it is. Um but you can see this track is both shipping and receiving different types of goods. Uh, some goods I had to add in the system. And then, you know, going on, you can see where like Riceland Mills is not, I mean, they're shipping and receiving. And even the Shackaset Furniture Company will be receiving some furniture because we might get furniture from Gamer and Thrones sent over to the Shackaset. Uh, Gamer and Thrones makes uh, porcelain, uh, toilets, sinks, you name it. Well, they might have to ship a sink over to the Shackaset Furniture to put in like a vanity of some type. So just kind of using that as an example. Then, of course, we got the Tetanus Scrap Company, which is going to receive scrap, fresh and funky produce. The Lime Motor Company, Amanda actually came up with that one. And if you're wondering why she came up with the Lime Motor Company, it's because they do not make lemons. So, I thought that was pretty funny. And then, of course, the uh, Stockyards, the Power Company, and this will be my little intermodal, which ships and receives trailers and containers. So, um, this is literally 
all all of my different industries added in and if we go back to the home locations you can see that the yard has it's listed as 15 industries and that's because each commodity is listed as an industry for some reason um, industrial 38 different commodities um, or destinations and wide junction city which is 23 so this is really good information to know, and um, this pretty much finishes the setup. Um, well, let's double check the commodities real quick to make sure, because I think I'm going to have some that I've added. I had to add all these, so i got to go back in and add, um, you know, uh, certain ones. And you can see that some of these that I added already had um, um, certain car types in here. But like cottonseed, for example, uh, we're going to want that in a covered hopper. So let's add it. Whoops, I didn't mean to add it. I meant to change it. Let's go back. All right, let's see if I got cotton seed down here. Okay, I'm not seeing it there. Okay, there's my cotton seed. That's one of them. Let's make sure the other one didn't come in down this way. And there's the cotton seed there. So let's just double click that one. We're going to take this one here. We're going to delete it because I don't need a duplicate. Uh, frozen meats. Um, Pretty self-explanatory. That needs to go in some type of reefer. And there's two different types. So we're going to change this one. And it looks like there's already one for mechanical right there. So actually, I'm going to take this one and make this one for the ice bunker. So let's do a change on that. All right, we got an ice bunker there. Let's get both of these frozen meats up. Um, let's see, go back to the checks. And I don't know why some of these are highlighted yellow. Um, so I know you're probably going to be like, why is it highlighted yellow? I have no clue. Um, vegetables. Um, these could actually, depending on the vegetable, would depend on... If it was in a box car, I've seen them in um, open hoppers, uh, like a HTS, for example. Um, especially when you think of like out west uh, sugar beets. So um, trailers, this one's going to be easy. Um, we're going to put this one on a TOFC. TOFC stands for, oh, where is my TOFC? I saw it with the containers. Uh, let's double check. Where's containers at? Cotton seed, corn syrup. Huh, that's weird. Let's come down here and make sure I got containers down here too. Because I, I know I added containers. Uh, do, 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 do. Con construction copper I don't know where my containers went that's weird that is very weird okay let's just go ahead and get all these set to print and then we'll just look at the ones with the X all right there we go corn cotton seed Okay, I'm not seeing my containers. And I know I did containers for sure. Because those would be on a TOFC. Which is, stands for trailer on flat car. Concentrates concrete, concrete, construction, construction. So there's no containers here. And I should have had a container up there. Which is, okay. So let's uh, do the trailers and worst case we might have to add one so there's trailers so there it is fc tofc car that's why i couldn't see it and let's change that so that has been changed 
and scroll up. So I'm not going to do this for the rest of them, but these, this is just kind of an example, you know, to get you started. So um, other than that, um, this kind of wraps up the um, the Waybill software basic setup and, you know, adding your industry, setting your home locations, color code things. Um, part three um, is actually going to be, we're going to be making the Waybills. Um, because that is a very, very timely process, and I'm just going to kind of do just a handful. Um, but like I said, we'll have to have at least 10 in order to do a print. So, and this, setting up this was a real, real timely process. So, all right. Well, other than that, I'm going to let y'all have at it. Um, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe so that way you can receive... And, and fill in the bell so you can receive future notifications because if this interested you, you i know you're going to want to see part three which is the actual creations of the waybills um you know always thumbs up that helps with the uh, youtube's algorithms and feel free to comment you know tell me your thoughts and stuff um i would also like to thank all of my supporters through patreon those who have purchased items from my teespring store and those who have sent just a one-time donation to my paypal.me all the links are below in the description. Um, so if you would like to help support my channel um, and receive some extras, um, if you're on a Patreon, you will you will receive some extras, uh, which is a monthly uh, fee that starts at $1 a month, which is really not a lot. Um, that, that helps with, you know help funding some of my contests and stuff and it also helps with providing you know future content for this channel uh especially as i'm doing the layout uh updates so um but other than that like i said i want to thank all of my extra supporters you know through those three entities and if you're interested in, in getting involved just look at the links below um other than that Y'all have a great weekend. Um, Sidetrack Sunday will be Sunday, seven, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Pacific, and 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Um, on s this upcoming Sunday, it's going to be on my channel. I will put out a reminder video Sunday morning, hopefully, um, to, to remind you. And I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet. It's not going to be the way bills. Um, I'm thinking about maybe either pulling out um, some of my kits, you know, that might need to be put together. Maybe doing a building kit or a car kit. I haven't, haven't quite decided yet. So um, we'll look and see uh, what I choose to do on Sidetrack Sunday, this upcoming Sunday. All right, y'all. Be safe out there. I wish you a great weekend and happy railroading.